So we reviewed a lot of batteries here on the Now Let's Review channel. True. This one has got to be the smallest amount of batteries, the least amount of energy, but it's also the smallest, the lightest, and the cheapest battery we've ever reviewed. Hums one? Hey everybody, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Now Let's Review, where we're reviewing the Hamswan battery. Can we just talk about brands for a second? Well, you don't like Hamswan? When I was a kid, brands mattered, uh -huh. right? And now the last few years, they don't. The whole reason is Amazon. Do you guys know this? Uh, basically, Amazon handed over the policing of things to the US Trademark Office. Okay. They basically said, hey, we don't know all these Chinese companies. We don't want to do all the research and the whatever. So you handle it, US Trademark Office. If you can get a trademark, we'll accept you as a company, right? So if you and I want to start a company tomorrow called like Superior Battery Company, mm. it would take us a while because there's probably a lot of superior companies, right? So we'd have to go on to the United States Trademark Office website. Okay, well, there's a superior gutter company and right. there's a superior boot company. And so when we submitted our thing for a superior battery company, it would, they, take, a while. It would take a while and- It would take years. Years. Yep. Okay, and we can't be selling on Amazon that, during that whole time. But if we call ourselves some, Ham Swan, Ham Swan, or if you've seen this gobbledygook, we're showing you some some here where yeah. you can't even pronounce them. If it has no vowels in it, for instance, then no one's probably ever tried to get that trademark. I before. see. So if there's no Ham Swan on the market, then the trademark office goes, "Yeah, you're approved. We did a preliminary check." And I'm sorry, Amazon, but that didn't prove anything. <laughs> what it did prove, though, is that people no longer care about the brand, and that's the problem. I think the whole idea behind brand is reputation. If I have the Zach brand, I don't want to put crap out under that brand name because then my whole reputation gets shot. All right, well, but the good news is they did put a sticker on their product off center and off kilter, and it says Ham Swan on it, but it's not on the box. Well, Look at and, that. And see, here's the thing. In China, many factories probably make this battery, and then you come along as a brand and you say, yeah, put my sticker on it, and, yep. and then I can say, oh, put my sticker on it. Yep. Um, so, I don't know. Let's just review it as a thing. <laughs> Let's not worry about the brand name and let's tell you what you might get if you buy this thing. Okay, so as you can see, it is a 300 watt solar power station. First of all, I'm just kind of getting upset at these things getting to call themselves solar generators or solar power stations because I think if you don't know about this, you think that it comes with solar panels. And a lot of people out there buy it, think that it'll come with solar panels and it doesn't. Don't put the word solar there. Yes, it can use solar panels, which is great, but I just think we should call it a 300 watt battery. Right, it is a battery. It can accept solar power, but again, it does not come with any right. solar panels. Yeah, You'd so have to buy fooled. those separately. Exactly. All right, let's talk about, so you said it's 300 watts. It's actually 293 watt hours. So it's not a lot of power, but that's its job in this case is to be small and light. But they're correct in saying the 300 watts because through this port, which is your normal wall outlet, if you live in North America, this will give you the 120 volts at 300 watts. 300 watts. It is a lot less than your normal, typical wall outlet is gonna give you 1500 watts. Yeah, so be thinking about that. It will power a laptop, no problem, but it's not gonna power heavier stuff. Um, so it's not gonna power your refrigerator or things like that. This is meant for little things. You can power seven things simultaneously, or so they claim. Mm -hmm. You can power the AC outlet. You can also power out from the two DC ports here, which are 12 volts, 10 amp max. You have another 12 volt 10 amp max uh, from your cigarette lighter car, car port. port. And then you get three USBs. Uh, so two of them are A's. One's a quick charge at 18 watts. The other is a 2.4 amp out, so kind of standard. And then the other is USB-C at 60 watt max out. So that's all very nice because a lot of our stuff today is USB. What's interesting here is that like with all batteries, you get the AC side, you get the DC side. I know a lot of us don't even think about that. We just think, well, this is how I plug things in. But it has an inverter in here. And so if you're charging stuff from the DC side, the batteries are already DC, so there's no inversion needed. But if you're coming out of the AC side for something a little bit bigger, let's say, I don't know, CPAP machine, then the batteries have to be inverted from DC to AC, and there's a loss there. And I think where this unit saves some money to get the price down, and we're gonna talk about price in a second, was they put a very inefficient converter. So you're not gonna get the whole 293 watt hours if you come out of the AC side. I think that they came out with a sub 90% efficient inverter. You might be like, what does all that mean? Well, it just means you're losing a lot of the power to heat when they do the inversion. Whereas if you use the DC side to do things like phones and uh, what else would be DC powered? Laptop, if you're using a uh, USB-C. USB. Yeah, that, that, Tablets. Yeah, I think the best part about this is that USB-C 60 watt PD thing. So that's the power delivery USB 
standard. Um, so that can charge things up like your phone very quickly, can charge up laptops at 60 watts, which is a lot faster than your typical USB. Right, but let's get to price because I think that's one of the big pluses here. It's $170 MSRP, but I've seen it with a $40 coupon on Amazon for 130. So. That's a really good price, I think, for what you're getting. It's 7.4 pounds. And as you can see, the dimensions of this are rather small. So it's 10 by five and a half by nine. And the nine is because they stuck this enormous handle on the top. It's I, convenient. I think that it's a bit overkill unless you're trying to kill a bear or something. Uh, you don't need such a big handle. I, I wish that they had cut that off and then you could have just carried this around and had a much smaller thing. But one handed is nice, I, I do think. Sure, no, I mean, yeah. The other thing is I think it's gonna live in your car a lot because mm -hmm. it can charge from your carport and it's got this nifty flashlight. We're gonna show you some B-roll here of not only just the regular flashlight, but also the SOS feature. So if you're by the side of the road and you're using this to maybe power a pump for your tires, mm -hmm. then you could have the light set up and make yourself very visible. So let's talk about what I think the most realistic use case for this item is. Mm -hmm. That is charging your phone and your laptop is basically all this thing is really cut out to do. This should charge your laptop up depending on the size of your battery, anywhere from two to six times, right. which is really great if you wanna go camping, if you want to kind of work outside of your office and you have a laptop battery that maybe isn't all that strong, mm -hmm. or if you wanna to go to a coffee shop and you can't necessarily get to the table with the outlet next to it, I think that this is a really great solution for laptop and phone charging, and it's a great size and a great package for it because we've reviewed a lot of other batteries that are way bigger, way heavier, and way more expensive than this. Yeah, the seven pounds, I think, is the, the difference here. It just makes it very portable, very easy to use. Charging it back up, though, it can only take 68 watts. This is the wall charger they give you, and so it's gonna take about five hours to charge it from dead to full. And you don't want it to go to dead because I believe that these are lithium ion batteries, not lithium phosphate batteries. If it's lithium ion, then you shouldn't charge it up to full and you shouldn't let it go down to zero. That makes it a little bit tougher for you because then you have to like pay attention to the battery indicator. And from what our testing and the reviews we've read, it's not very accurate. So you might be like, I've got 85% and then later find out that you don't. It's only measuring voltage. And as we've seen on e-bikes and other things, these things aren't that accurate. You could also charge it from solar, which is great. It's got an input there, but again, it'll only take an 18 volt up to 100 watt solar panel. And I think even with the 100 watts, it's only gonna take 68 of those watts. Now you're going to be plugging it into this little barrel connector here. So whatever kind of solar panel you are using, you're probably gonna be using one of those smaller, foldable, backpack sized ones, which I think is a good use case because you're gonna have a small solar panel, a small battery, and then if you wanna go out into a field or a meadow and work on your laptop or make phone calls all day, um, then you'd have a pretty light solution. You'd be able to throw it all in a backpack and kind of walk back to wherever you were going. If you do the math, if you have five hours of sun that day, it should get you back up to full. So you could keep doing it on sunny days with a, a 100 watt solar panel. So this is to me, one of the most basic camping setups you could do if you need a laptop. If you want a phone, I think that your regular charging brick is probably gonna be sufficient, especially because they sell solar panels that'll charge up with USB into those smaller bricks. If you're thinking of going camping and glamping with like a blender, I don't think this is gonna work for Forget you. Forget it. Because blenders use a lot more power. And so most of those items that you think of like hair dryers and heaters and stuff like that will not work with this. Now, a heating blanket, will work, but only for probably about four or five hours. And yeah, here is kind of another weakness of this. Um, because the battery capacity is so small, things that you want to run overnight, like say a CPAP machine, most CPAP machines are going to be somewhere from... 50 watts, somewhere in there. Uh, I've seen them more like around 80 watts. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, with, with the power conversion inefficiencies... Uh, you're, you're probably getting like three hours, four hours. Right, unless you're sleeping really short or right. you don't need your CPAP machine, which why wouldn't, <laughs> no, uh, this is too small. Right. So if you were looking at this as like, is this my CPAP machine battery? No, it is not, it is too small. Again, just laptops, just phones. I feel like it's really just good for charging other things up. And here's the other thing, when you use one of the smaller brick batteries that you use for say your phone, it's quiet. This has a fan built in. And so as soon as you use the AC side, the fan turns on. Let's see what that sounds like. And it's not too loud, but it, right now it's very smelly. When you get these things from China um, and you turn them on for the first time, especially if you're in a little tent or a car, you're gonna be like, what is that plastic smell? 
So I would say let it run outside if you can for a little <laughs> while, get that smell out of there um, because it's just, you don't want to, your camping trip, you bring your new battery and then everything's like, why does it smell so bad? Well, and here's the other thing with camping. Camping, you want to be in the great outdoors and you want to be experiencing nature and you don't want to have the entire time you're charging your laptop. I think that that's going to get annoying. Now, I can shut this off when I shut off the AC side. It's dead silent. And so if you're just charging things from the DC side, the fan won't turn. The fan isn't going to turn on. You know, they save pennies here and there. They could have put a quiet fan that you wouldn't have even known was on because they can do that, but they didn't. Um, yeah. And that's how they save the money. It, it really matters whether it fits your use case. Don't just buy it because you're like, oh, great, a cheap battery. Make sure that you have a good use case for it. Otherwise, you might not use it. And I think that that is probably the biggest, most important factor in all of this. If you are Mr. Outdoors and you want to be outside all the time and you want to bring your laptop, like let's say you just want to work, you know, at your office, but you want to be outside at the picnic table all day as long as you can. This is a pretty decent option for you. Maybe. I just, the other thing is when I go camping, I like to bring Starlink. And Starlink will work for probably about three or four hours on this. Again, if you've got something charging it, you can get more hours out of it. But like, who wants to be worried about my Starlink stop working? Well, Starlink is going to be for your glamping setup. And I think that, right. yeah, this is just the, the most basic battery setup for charging your laptop. Can I give you guys a little hint? When you get this, uh, you have lots of these in your life, right? Please write on it with Sharpie or put a label on it because later you'll be like, what does this go to? Because the name on it does not match. There's no name. There's no name. So you're not going to know that it goes to this. And so you, you'll plug the wrong thing in. So label it, keep it with it. I also want to talk about the shipping. Take this off for yep. a second. It, I think it was well packed actually. Yes. Um, it comes with nice foam packing. And that wraps it well. That keeps it pretty safe. The only other thing it comes with is your carport adapter. And so just know that there's not a lot of other fan. You, there's no like solar panel ones or whatever. This mm -hmm. is all it comes with. For the price, if, if this fits your use case, I think that this is okay. Yeah, let me just talk about some of the other stats. It's got a pure sine wave on the AC output, so they say. Got battery protection, overload protection, short circuit protection, and temperature protection. But I do want to point out, they're lithium ion batteries, most likely not lithium phosphate. So lithium ion batteries can catch on fire easier. And if you keep this in your car or in your home, that's just something to think about. I would rather see you have lithium phosphate batteries. They're, like we talked about, you can, they're much more stable and less they're more robust, right? right? They're less likely to catch on fire. The other thing is this is not UL listed. If you know anything about UL, that's Underwriters Laboratories. Right. They test things to make sure that they're not going to kill you. This is not UL listed. It is uh, Intratech uh, UN38.3, which is basically their battery pack uh, standard. So it was tested by something, but it's basically the cheaper and less well-respected uh, laboratory that does testing. Yeah, and I just don't know how much you can trust Chinese companies that don't have a real brand name. Because I mean, you can just, you know what you could do? Just stick the sticker on. You could on. just print it out and stick it on there. And because it's not UL, right. UL would go after a company if they had lied. And let me just tell you, Amazon ain't well. checking that. Um, <laughs> exactly. you, you know, you might be thinking, oh, Amazon, that's a brand I know and trust. But they don't care. They don't go and check these things out. That's just, what you need us for, unfortunately. Exactly. So, again, uh, I don't know. You get what you pay for. I just don't know that I would really recommend this unless this exactly fits your use case. We've reviewed lots of other batteries here on Now Let's Review. Again, they're all going to be larger because I don't think you can get much smaller than this without making it a phone brick. I, I think that what's stopping me here is the 300 watts. I think for a lot of you watching, that sounds like a big number. If you're talking about, like we said, a blender, a hair dryer, a CPAP machine, lots of the things that you would want to use from time to time and they don't work with it, right. then you're gonna be like, oh, I can only use it for low power right. things. And, you know, even a smart TV, like, I'm just trying to think like outside yeah, the box. Yeah, smart TV is only gonna run for like two hours on this thing. Right. Um, again, you could you could spend another 100 or $60 on some kind of solar panel. I haven't had much luck with those, by the way. Right. I, I've had to, I, I've basically found a battery on my own, like, 10 years ago that I tried to get working with a solar panel and I thought that it would last me for like four hours and it lasted me for like one. It's not going to work as good as you think it's going to. Um, and I think a lot of that has to do with the inverter in this. I think that that's uh, a key piece to this. Uh, you're not going to get the 294 uh, watt hours or whatever that's in it out because it has to go through the inverter and you're basically paying a an energy toll. Yeah, I think we all kind of want 
one of these batteries in our lives, but this is not gonna help you that much in an emergency or with a lot of the use cases that we talk about for our bigger batteries. What I recommend you doing is watching some of our reviews for some of the bigger batteries to see if those fit your life better and you know save up and get your budget working for that because why spend money on things that might just sit around unused? Right. Good little gift for a student, but not something I'd wanna rely on. I'd really wanna get something bigger that I could you know have that safety factor built in. Exactly. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Let us know in the comments down below what you think. If you have questions for us, things you want us to review and make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of our upcoming reviews. We'll, we'll see, see you next time. time. Now let's review. review.